Today what I'd like to do is figure out how we can find the length of a curve using integration. So say we've got this curve here, y equal f of x, and we want to know how long it is from x equal a to x equal b. And one of our criteria is going to be that the function be differentiable, and in a moment we'll see why we need that criteria. So we need to somehow use something we know to approximate this curve. Well, we know how to find the length of a line segment. So the idea is we would partition our x interval and join the endpoints of all those subintervals. creating line segments. And the idea is these line segments are approximations of the curve. As we make this partition such that those subintervals get skinnier and skinnier, these line segments will get shorter and shorter and they'll get better and better at approximating the length of the curve. So let's just look at one of those line segments. So the first thing to notice that this is different than when we did area or volume for that matter. We're not making the function constant, so it's not a series of horizontal line segments. It's actually the slope that we're fixing. So over each one of these subintervals, the slope is thought of as being a constant. So let's just look at one of these subintervals x sub k minus 1 to x sub k. And what I'm going to do is draw a little right triangle there. And what we're interested in is the length of the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Now the reason I do that is that that's going to relate our change in x and our change in y to the length of that line segment and we know how to do that by Pythagoras. So let's redraw that right here so we can see it. That hypotenuse I'm going to call delta s sub k. This is just our change in x, delta x sub k. This is our change in y, but it's actually negative, right? As we moved from x sub k minus 1 to x sub k, we went down. So this would actually be a negative value. So to ensure that that's never going to happen, we really want to write that as the absolute value of delta y sub k. Because depending on what the curve's doing at the moment, this could be positive, it could be negative. This will always be positive, assuming we're integrating left to right as we do. OK, so how can we relate these quantities to each other? Well, Pythagoras tells us delta s sub k squared is delta x sub k squared plus absolute value of delta y sub k squared. Now we see we can just drop that absolute value because then we're turning around and squaring it. So positive or negative, this quantity would end up positive. And I want to take the square root, isolate that delta s sub k. So we have this, and now I'm dropping the absolute value. Now think about where we want to head with this. We're going to try and come up with a Riemann sum that represents the sum of the length of all these line segments. That Riemann sum is going to lead to an integral with respect to x, right? Because we've partitioned the x-axis. So ultimately, we'd like this thing expressed only in terms of delta x sub k. We really don't want delta y sub k, and we don't really want to write it as delta s sub k. So my first step along that path is to get the delta x sub k out of that square root. And so, That's 1 plus the 
When we divide through by our delta x sub k squared, we would have that. And then outside of the square root, that's just delta x sub k. Okay, now we're almost there. We have to deal with this delta y sub k, delta x sub k. What is that? Well, as we moved from here to here, that's change in y over change in x. That's actually the slope of that secant line. Remember, when we connect two dots on the curve there, we called that the secant line in Calc 1. Um, and we had a very important theorem in Calc 1 that told us that if the function's differentiable, which that's why we required that this function be differentiable here in our setup, if it's differentiable, there's going to be some point in between here where the slope of the tangent line is the same as the slope of the secant line. That's going to allow us to get rid of this. So um, we know by what we call the mean value theorem in Calc 1, there exists some point, we don't know where it is, but the key is it exists. There exists some c sub k in that interval from x sub k minus 1 to x sub k such that the derivative of our function there is equal to the slope of that secant line. So we will take Wherever that is, in my picture, maybe that's right about there. That's the c sub k we're going to be using. So let's rewrite this now, replacing this with that derivative we know from the mean value theorem. So that tells us that delta s sub k could be written as the square root of 1 plus, replace that with the derivative. And now we have something that looks like the form in a Riemann sum. So the length of this curve would be approximately the sum of all those little line segments, all those little delta s sub k's. And as we've done in all of our integration, the next step is to shrink these down so they get better and better at matching the curve. Remember the way we said that was we let the norm of the partition go to zero. So the length will be exactly what you get when you let the norm of the partition go to zero. Of that expression. But, by definition, this is what we call the definite integral, right? So, finally, that is equal to the integral from a to b of square root 1 plus our function squared dx. So square root 1 plus the derivative of f squared from a to b. And now you see it's key that that function be differentiable. The only reason that we could guarantee that there was going to be some time where the derivative was equal to the slope of the tangent line, or excuse me, the slope of the secant line, was by mean value theorem. And that is only true if the function is differentiable on that subinterval. So it has to be differentiable on this interval, this interval, that interval, that interval. So overall, it needs to be differentiable on the entire interval 
from A to B. But now we have the length of a curve expressed in terms of an integral. Next time what we'll do is look at an example with an actual curve.